What is there to watch for for the rest of this football season? No, really, I do need some help figuring that out. And we have Graham Couch of the Lancy State Journal here to help guide us and also talk about quarterbacks and what staff was worse. Oh, this one or the 2019 one. Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of Locked on Spartans is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked on Make Every Moment More. And right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on today to get started. And gang, before I let this man talk, please rate, review, and subscribe to Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white every single day. Now, uh, this man doesn't need an introduction. He's been on the show far too many times. I can't believe he agrees to you know keep on coming back here, but we've dragged him on. Once again, it is Graham Couch of Lancy State Journal, the Couch in the Room podcast. Graham, how are we doing over there? Are we doing okay? I am doing well. Yeah, I, I, I'm worried about you, but uh, you seem to be, Thanks. you know, <laughs> you seem to be, you know, you perked up a little bit. So that's good. Yeah. I, you know, nothing like a good old NCAA investigation to bring that sun out from behind the clouds. I got to say, I never thought I'd be in this great of a mood after a 49 to 0 loss to that school down the road, but I got. I woke up like Grandpa Joe and Willy Wonka this morning, Graham. It's 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 going okay, all things considered. Um, now, with that said, I will wipe the smile off my face because we are going to stick talking mostly about the Spartans in this episode here. And Graham, I've had you on you know many times, and I wanted you back on for a lot of reasons. One, I, I just love talking to you. You know, you you are great, uh, wonderful insight, a genius of sorts, and I know that the listeners resonate with that as well. They always love when you come on. But Graham, as a fellow creator of content around Michigan State Athletics, I'm coming to you in need of mentorship here because, look, this is a conversation we could have had offline because I'm desperate, Graham. I, what, what am I going to talk about the next five weeks here? Like, honest to God, I think a bowl game is out the window, personally, unless some divine miracle happens and they can, you know, win four games. I don't know how it's going to happen. We can do the whole, like, oh, watch these young players. They'll be here next year. In this day and age of college football, any young player that shows out, it might be in his best interest to leave. So, Graham, like, what on earth am I watching and, and going to talk about the next five weeks here? Two things. I appreciate the introduction. It's so much kinder than anything my wife has ever said about sure. me. I appreciate that. Um, the, uh, but, I, yeah, I, I, look, we talked to Sam Levitt today and Kaiten Hauser, and you just don't know. I mean, I think it would be a huge shame for Michigan State if, if Sam Levitt, you never discover what that guy is yeah. and, and he goes somewhere else. And you could do it, and he could still go somewhere else. He's a West Coast kid who's right. going to have options at the end of this year. And, uh, you know, Hauser may as well. And so um, that's a hard thing. You know, these guys all know, and they, they, they'll say it to a man. And MSU, to their credit, has not kept young players from being interviewed. And um, that uh, that right. is that is something I'm, I'm not 100% sure would always be the case in this circumstance, even at Michigan State. I think, it, you know – they've done a nice job of letting these kids share their how they're feeling and their perspective and it's very clear that they're trying to live in the now and but there will be decisions that have to be made and yeah. some of these guys are probably going to leave i mean you see it you know with you know, with Simeon Barrow and Black Sock now jumping in the in the portal and and this is sort of the end i i do think we're almost date wise to the end of the portal now for the 30 day window for those guys gotcha um, so you, you're not going to see more of it until the end of the year. But at the end of the year, it's it's open to all these guys again. And um, so yeah, you don't get to you don't get the normal bad year stuff where it's like, well, at least look at this, because um, because that might not be part of the the future of the program. The future of the program really, in the near term, is going to depend largely on how many of these kids stick around. And so right. I, I, look, there's, I would say this: there is there are lots of discussion points to be had, uh, not just the coaching search but sort of young player development and, 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 you know, what things could be if certain guys stick around. And, and, you know, one thing that's interesting is um, a couple of them have said, have said how important it is to get a win or wins to help the vibe, to help these guys sort of collectively want to be in the fight together beyond this year. So, I mean, yeah. these wins are not inconsequential and, and, and how they feel about things. And then frankly, you have basketball season and, and hockey season to a degree. And, and, and other things to 
uh, occupy your mind. And that is, while that is, might be sort of the downfall of Michigan State football, the fact that the fan base doesn't have to ache for this year around and yeah. financially that limits the program, that's not your problem because it's basketball season. <laughs> Damn straight. You got that right. <laughs> you know it. And again, a friendly reminder, Wednesday on Big Ten Plus, I already just renewed my subscription. They robbed me of another nine ninety five. But what am I going to do? Not watch Michigan State win by 80 against Hillsdale? Like, no, I, I need to see this, Graham. It will be a cathartic evening on Wednesday. Or actually, now that I just said that out loud, Hillsdale will now beat us in double overtime because we jinx everything on this show. But I digress. Anyway, I, I, I want to get to something that has been, you know, percolating amongst the fan base here, whether it be message boards, Twitter, or just texting with your buddies over here. You mentioned the vibe is horrendously down. Very understandably so. I, it is a total, complete train wreck. Graham, I'll just ask point blank. Are you getting any vibes that this team has quit? We're going to use the Q word here because... 49-0 wasn't too great. Yes, Michigan is a juggernaut and all, you know, reasons about them stealing signs. I don't really think that was necessary for Saturday's game. It, things are not looking good. Do you get the vibe that, mm, that there might not be some buy-in anymore at all with this team? I, I don't yet. Now, I haven't seen them okay. play yet Saturday at Minnesota. And, you know, I asked Harlan Barnett about that yesterday, just sort of what a, a character game this is in terms of, you know, Mark D'Antonio had a game in Minnesota in 2012 that he considered one of the most important in his program. And it was the year yep. before the Rose Bowl. They were five and six. And those guys really had to decide whether they wanted to play well enough to win. And they did. They played well to get bowl eligible, to then go play in an off the radar game in the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl and all that stuff. And and he thought the maturity and the, the character of the team showed that week said a lot about them. This yeah. is not that same circumstance in terms of where the program really. is. But it, <laughs> But it is, I, I think it's a, it's a character moment because Michigan that week is a season within a season. So even if you've just blown a 24-6 sure. lead at Rutgers, you can get up for it. You don't want to be embarrassed. This is a game that can change your legacy. There's all sorts of stuff. Now you're off the radar at Minnesota. Now it, things have gone have spiraled a little bit. There, there's a, this is a test of metal, a test of fortitude. You know, it's, And I think we'll find out a lot about this team. And the one thing I have been impressed to this uh, and, you know, Jim Del Delgado um, today was talking and he, he, you know, talked about just how much how the lack of quit, like they were overmatched, perhaps mm -hmm. to an experience in the secondary in certain ways. But he saw the guys that were out there still playing to the end. And so I think that's an important component. And that to this point, I've been fairly impressed with, I think, at Rutgers, when things started to spiral on them, and, you know, they couldn't stop the momentum. That's Hard to say that's quitting versus just not being good enough to stop what's coming downhill at you. But mm -hmm. um, this weekend will be telling. I was kind of along the lines of that, too, with the Rutgers thing. like Because that, that's when a lot of people started to be a lot about, like, oh, this team quit in the fourth quarter. And my thing was, like, I, unfortunately, I think that's just who they are. I, you, I, you I think that they are just that bad. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that was, uh, that was a yeah, tough one. But... I, I didn't understand the quit line because you're up 24-6. You obviously cared enough to get to that point. Sure. And, you know, and then you have a, two, you know, bad special teams errors. That has nothing to do with quitting. That's special teams is another issue. But it, it, you take away those things and they win that game comfortably. I, I do like that you mentioned the 2012 Minnesota game where Le'Veon Bell had, I believe it was 112 carries for 586 yards. Like that was, you talk about an efficient game, high production. That that was an all-timer back in uh, MSU it was it was also the game that I knew Le'Veon was going pro, and D'Antonio hated this. It was pretty early in my relationship with D'Antonio, but I asked okay. him that day, what would you tell Le'Veon Bell to encourage him to come back for a senior year? <laughs> and he said, I'll give you the ball another 300 times. I thought, well, that's not good. That's that's, <laughs> right. that's just run on the tires. You, that's right. not the answer, man. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you. He doesn't need that. You know, like, there, there was no good answer. And in, in the no. NIL era, maybe there would have been a different – uh, certainly but, yeah but yeah there was no way <laughs> that's interesting hey we'll just beat the absolute brakes off you uh, please come back here and yeah maybe you'll be alive by the time you make it to Pasadena who knows uh, good luck to your legs here but Graham we're going to talk more about this football team uh, on the other end here but uh, I, I hate to do this to such a fine guess as you are I got to send you to the bench right now because I need to talk to people's ears off about Jace Medical J-A-S-E Medical and they want to set you up with the Jace case not just for emergencies but also hey this holiday season as well this can make a good gift and 
there's also gift cards to be had at jacemedical.com. So hook up your family or loved ones with the Jace case. Now, what on earth is the Jace case? What do I keep talking about? It is five crucial antibiotics that you could just easily stash in your house, your RV, your boat, or hey, if you're going to travel abroad or even just the other side of the state, just stash that in your duffel bag or your luggage because... Well, boy, howdy, you'd hate to get caught with a bug and then, oh my God, I got to find a doctor and do they take my medical insurance? And it's there's just pure pandemonium and panic. Like, no, no, no. But the Jace case, it is easy. It is convenient and it is always there for you. It is so easy to get hooked up with the Jace case. I mean, just fill out a small online survey or in some cases, just a quick phone call with their board certified doctor team. Now go to jacemedical.com and enter promo code LOCKDOWN at checkout for a $20 discount on your order. And again, hey, we got the gift cards in tow for you at jacemedical.com. Again, J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code LOCKDOWN for $20 off your order at jacemedical.com. Also, this upcoming weekend, if you're looking for a reason to be somewhat emotionally invested in this game, FanDuel Sportsbook is the place that will get your heart pumping. It is America's number one sportsbook. And right now, if you're feeling spicy about our Spartans, they are sorry, seven point underdogs as they hit the road to Minnesota. So jump on them if you're thinking that, well, hey, they can't lose every single game this season, or at least if they lose, surely they could cover one of these games, can't they? So FanDuel is the place to do it. And hey, let's say the college isn't your cup of tea. Well, it's the best place to get in on all the NFL betting action, because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's right. You heard me correctly. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose with just a $5 dollar bet. It's a super easy to use app. You get paid immediately from Mr. FanDuel. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash lockdown and kick off this NFL season. It's FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And let's get the one, the only Graham Couch back onto the stage here. And Graham, for the last month or so, uh, us state fans have been asking, how does it get worse than this? Like, hey, on that ill-fated Saturday night or early Sunday morning, the Mel Tucker story breaks. It's like, oh, my God, well, that's pretty bad. How can it get worse than this? Okay, Washington drops 700 yards on our dome at a game they could have won 200 to zero. And then, well, how does it get worse than that? Well, Maryland is up 21-0 immediately at homecoming. You leave 2-2 two and two from your homestand to start the season. How can it get worse, Graham? Well, I was backup quarterback. They find a way to win the game after Michigan State controls it for that long. And then, well, oh, my God, how can it get worse than that? Well, how about blowing an 18-point lead against Rutgers? How does it get worse than that? Well, we all just saw it. You get rolled 49-0. to zero. You give J.J. McCarthy his Heisman campaign launch. And also, well, in the midst of all that, hey, sorry about the whole Hitler thing, everyone. Um, Graham, it's, it's almost comical how bad things can continue to get worse when we think that we've hit rock bottom. So I'll just ask you. You could be as creative as you want here. How, how can it get worse for Michigan State this year? Or is the silver lining, hey, we've already seen the bottom. It's all upside from here. What, what is it, Graham? We need help. Well, it can always get worse. I mean, the, the wheels can Great. come off. You can have just like, you know, we, we've seen you, you have a team that just gives up and it gets really embarrassing. And you still have games at Ohio State and against Penn State and that Ford Field could be a takeover for Penn State. I, here, here's a scenario that, I mean, if you're a Michigan State fan, you, you, you kind of need Michigan to beat. Penn State, and I know nobody wants to hear that, but because what you don't want, you want Penn State to sort of be out of it. If Penn State loses to Michigan, they're going to have two losses. Their fan base isn't going to be, it's not going to be a takeover of Ford Field like it might be if they're playing for something. And because that game's on a Friday night and the Michigan-Ohio State game's not until Saturday, all the tiebreakers would still be in play when that game kicks off. So if, if they beat Michigan, which I don't think they'll do, but if they beat Michigan, they're going to be playing for everything, and I think you'll see uh, you, you'll, it'll be a difficult atmosphere. So that's just one way things could could get worse. Your, your senior day could be a Penn State home game, essentially, in Detroit. Um, mm-hmm. But things could also get better. You know, I mean, the next two weeks are games that are against opponents that Michigan State can beat. I mean, Michigan State could win the Big Ten West if they were just in the Big Ten West. <laughs> if, if, I mean, if that's – it's and, and yeah. people would feel a little different about things, you know. I mean, um, the Big Ten West is bad. But, uh, you know, they can beat Minnesota. They can beat uh, Nebraska. I don't know that they will win either of those games. But if they do, and all of a sudden two and five is is four and five, and you're still going to likely fall sh- short of a bowl game and, and things are probably going to go poorly against Ohio State and Penn State, you, you're at least feeling 
different about yourself. Two wins in a okay. row, it just changes the vibe. And for these players, I think that would mean a lot. And it, and I also think, you know, that gives you the chance to play Penn State with a bowl game on the line. And you're also probably going to introduce a new coach right after that. Like, it's not going to be – it's going to be a weird situation. But you're at least – if you beat if you win your next two games, and you're going to have to beat Indiana too, but I think they will. Uh, Indiana is the one game I really feel strongly about, as long as the wheels don't come completely off. But – yeah, we'll see. <laughs> then, you're, then you're at least playing for something all the way through the season, even if it doesn't go well against Penn State. And um, so, you know, I, I think there's there is that, and and yeah, but it it could also get worse. I, I see what you're saying with the Penn State thing, um, for you know all the reasons you just named, and also like uh, the amount of crow I will be eating if that is a Penn State takeover. Ford Field would be astronomical because I, I I was screaming into the microphone saying everyone relax it's not going to be a Penn State home game everyone calm down and oh my god it's uh it's 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 trending in that direction oopsie daisy um but I just can't root for Michigan I just like I can't. no I understand a lot of people won't. yeah you're not alone probably <laughs> yeah my, my own grandmother could line up at running back for Michigan and I would still root for her to you know have the Devin Gardner in 2013 game of just negative 40 whatever yards sorry grandma but like it's it's business I'm sorry um Graham, from one great conversation topic to another, um, just always a sunny day here in East Lansing. You know, this was an interesting topic that, that I saw brought up on Twitter here. Uh, what staff – here, you know what? I'll, I'll paint this in a positive light. What staff was better? How about that? What staff was better? The 2019 staff, Mark D'Antonio's last staff after he rearranged the deck chairs, of course, or the one currently that we have in 2023, which would you trust a team with more? Because I don't know if there's a good answer, quite frankly, but uh, I'll, I'll put this on you. And the hard thing, to be fair to this staff, this staff was built to be the assistance to Mel Tucker, right? This wasn't they, they weren't yeah. built, for, you know, <laughs> right. they weren't built for the situation they're in. Correct. Um, that, that's a good question. I mean, I, I, things have gone awry for different reasons. I, you know, we we can't picture this season if things had gone if, if Mel Tucker was still in place, right? I don't think they'd be all that much better. Mm -hmm. But at least the there would be still be trending or, or playing towards something, because until he got fired, that contract was going to keep him around. And, oh yeah. And so you and and that and even going into the year, I picked MSU to be two and three. I think I predicted MSU to be uh, three and four at this point. Not much worse. Okay. And this was never the year I thought was a judgment year. I thought you wanted to see growth into the season and all that stuff. 49 nothing though, is different. And when you lose a 24-6 lead in the fourth quarter, like would those things have happened the way they happened with Mel Tucker? Because I think even with Mel Tucker, that would have been a problem. Uh, mm. Obviously, it would have been a problem. Even And so – but I, I would probably say that this staff going into the year would be the staff that I would have taken over those two. Fair enough. And let's just put a letter grade on Harlan Barnett because I, I've been – Critical of him, of course, but I think I've been fair because I always preface it with, hey, I have a lot of respect for this guy. He took over a very, very, very hard situation, yada, yada, yada. But, I mean, am I just like a crazy, you know, diehard fan that's like losing his marbles a little bit? Or has even like this been a little disappointing here from Harlan Barnett, especially after you hear the things of like, oh, yeah, like guys have been showing up late. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's like, oh, we're being a little too kind, a little too compassionate, I think. Uh oh, <laughs> I think I think what Harlan is is, is too honest. I, I mean, he just yeah, says that's a good things point. that other coaches don't in press conferences, and and then you yeah. take you take crap for it. So, I mean, I, I think that that is, um, I, yeah, I mean, there are things about what's happened that I don't think have gone well. That I don't think he's like he's not. He doesn't right now look like he's built to be a head coach, right? Right. Having said that, um, what he's done in terms of keeping these guys together, and I think having things not really spiral in terms of just mass defections. I mean, you have a staff where there are definitely guys on that staff who felt passed over for that role that he got. So you're managing that you're managing a team. That's true. And there's a lot going on and you weren't expecting this. And you also get Washington and Michigan, maybe the two best teams in the country on your schedule during this, this, this stretch. Um, that said, I'm not, I'm not defending him as a, you know, is is getting the most out of teams and having his team disciplined and all that sort <laughs> right. of stuff. I'm just saying it's a tough spot. Yeah. And um, so, yes, you know, I think in his wildest dreams, it probably could have gone better. I certainly thought 
they weren't destined necessarily to have the end of game issues they've had. Um, but yeah. none of it is really surprising. <laughs> Rarely do you see interim coach situations that go all that well. In fact, I mean, yeah. look at Jim Leonard last year, who I still think at some point is going to be a really good head coach somewhere, who was Wisconsin's interim coach, who they were looking at, like, is this going to be the guy? Let's give him an audition. And that didn't really go well enough for him to, to, to get that job. So it, it's a tough spot anytime you're in this in this position. Fair enough. And we'll try to end things here with some smiles on Michigan State fans' faces because we could all use one. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit of shooty hoops. That's right, basketball in the mix here. But first, Graham, I hate to do this twice to you. Got to send you back to the bench because I need to talk the people's ears off about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy? Well, it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and way more whether you're into speed power or style ebay motors has got you covered and with over 122 million parts i'll say that again that's a fun number 122 million parts for your number one ride or die you'll always find exactly what you're looking for and with ebay guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or it's your hard-earned money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber, not cash. God, I love that line. That's a good one. With all of the parts that you need at prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Again, that is ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. And also, if you want to look the best this basketball season, may I direct you to homefieldapparel.com. That's right, the best apparel brand in the game. And let's say for some reason you're not just a fan of Michigan State, like you actually have other interests, like, hey, Colorado School of Mines, or maybe even some Hope College or any of the other directional schools in this state. Homefield Apparel has got you covered as well. They have dozens, if not well over 100 schools in their database and with all the best logos possible. These are vintage logos that you may not have known ever existed, like, hey, the, the golf Gruff Sparty logo that I'm wearing. Had no idea until I hopped on homefieldapparel.com and, well, I couldn't reach my credit card faster. And also, I say this every time, it's the most comfortable clothing you will have in your closet. So what are you waiting for? Again, go to homefieldapparel.com, smash in promo code LOS23, all one word, LOS23, for 15% off of your first order at homefieldapparel.com. Again, homefieldapparel.com, promo code LOS23 for 15% off. That's homefieldapparel.com. And let's get... Graham Couch back into the mix here to try to smile here to end the show here. Uh, Graham, has anything ever come at a better time in the history of the earth than Michigan State basketball tipping off their season kind of informally uh, Wednesday night against Hillsdale at Breslin Center? Very excited. No, it, 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 it yeah. It's time, you know, I think it's yes. time for basketball. <laughs> um, and it's, a, you know, it's, it's, maybe the best vibes towards basketball I can remember in a long time for okay. a couple reasons. One, you have this highly anticipated season, but you also have this great freshman class. Yeah. And usually you don't get those two things together. And, you know, I mean, I can remember like the 2013, 14 season where there was this sense of, um, you know, this could be the year, but also dread that they were missing out on Jabari Parker and some other guys. And so it was like, okay. it had to be now. So there was this built in angst if anything went wrong. And so I think there is a sense that not only does this have a chance to be the year, but that it doesn't have to be the end all be all. Like, it's not like if it doesn't happen, that's it. Like there's a real chance that, you know, Jeremy Fears and Xavier Booker and, and Chase Richardson and Cohen Carr are a big part of, next year's team and, and our more seasoned group. And so, but I do think this year's team has all the components um, to make a run that you want if they're good enough at the center position. And that's still the spot that you go, you feel better about it than you did a year ago. You feel differently mm -hmm. than a year ago. They're certainly deeper there, even without Jackson Kohler. I think they should be serviceable with Mati Sissoko and Carson Cooper, who I think is going to develop into a nice, a nice player and in, in, in time. And maybe even this year, yeah. um, but you know that that's the, that's the one position where you go, um, and you know I I, I think their backcourt will be as, as good as any in the country, maybe Special. the best in the country, yeah. and that's how you win mostly in college basketball. 
So seeking more advice from you here, because of course we are in the business, or at least I am, of overreacting to every single thing that happens in East Lansing. What is something we can overreact to against Hillsdale? Like, is there anything that if you see for better or for worse, you'd be like, oh my God, that's actually, this is incredible. Or, you know, on the contrary, like if, if Cooper and Sissoko do give up a combined like 34 points, 18 rebounds, like that, that might be a little concerning right but yeah if there's a problem rebounding i would say that's a concern i would, yeah. I, would I would don't i would say not to overreact if veterans don't look great you know these okay. guys in this game you know you know what tyson walker is you know yeah. i think aj hogard is determined to have a really good year and against great guards will be there and play well and and same with uh you know um same with jay nakins um i you know the other thing that can happen to big guys similar to the junior college ranks that I covered way back in the day is when you get, I don't know the size of Hillsdale's roster, mm -hmm. but big guys hate being guarded by six, four big guys. They just hate it. They're, they're just, they're like gnats. They're, they're in their way. They're, they're <laughs> swatting at the ball. They're lower. They're nothing they've practiced against in forever. It's just awkward. And it doesn't make for a fun game for them. So they may not always look good. Now they ought to rebound well, but it, it, it's, it's it's almost worse than facing another big guy in terms of trying to score in the poke. So I wouldn't worry about that sort of stuff. Um, in terms of overreacting to that, I think is or, or things that are, are, are really positive though. Um, I think you you want to see body language, how the team okay. interacts. I mean, this is I I do think like the thing I wonder about this group is how it really works when the minutes start to get split. And that's, yeah. you know, how it all stays together. Because there are a lot of guys to keep happy, a lot of capable players. And they've been battling in these really competitive practices and scrimmages, but they've all been playing a lot. And so now those minutes are cut in half. And the reality that the veterans are going to play a lot is, is going to be there. Um, and um, I, I think that just looking at how guys deal with prolonged stretches on the bench, I think is going to be something that's, to start to pay attention to. I'm just fascinated with, you know, the whole complete opposite of a problem that Izzo had last year where, you know, he's playing Jason White in substantial minutes in that PK-85 tournament because he had to, whereas this year, I mean, just just like you said, just like we've been talking up and down all offseason, like, wow, this this could be a weeks, if not months long puzzle to figure out, like, who your rotations really are. Like, it's going to be fascinating to see how long this drags out for. Yeah, I mean, if Garrick Norman was on last year's roster, he would have played a ton in November. When they oh, my were God, guys. 35 a game. Yeah, are you kidding me? <laughs> right. And, and now, you know, these next two games may be the most minutes he gets all season if things if they stay right. healthy and everything. So, yeah. I mean, I think that is, you know, that is a very different situation. And, um, yeah, it's, it's almost like there's no middle ground. I mean, I think the good thing is, though, when you acquire some depth, I mean, the center position, if they didn't have three of them, they'd be in trouble now. Instead, yeah. because they still have two healthy guys, they're OK. You know, I don't think you want to have to have Xavier Booker play a ton of minutes at center right now. And, and so right. that is, um, you know, they have they have some depth and some versatility. Uh, they have the ability. I mean, I think at almost every position. They can lose a guy and be OK. And that yeah. is. And that is not often in the college game. Well, they won't. I'm not saying they want to do that. I think they're at their best with sure. all these guys. But right. you know, they, they they know Tyson Walker and Jeremy Fierce can run the point. You know, they they know um, if something happened to Hogarth and vice versa. They know they have some some shooting. And um, same with you know Trey Holloman gets forgotten. I mean, there's a guy who was a 10 minute of the game guy who's going to battle for minutes. It, it's going to be a fascinating year. I think it's going to be a fun team and fun season to cover. Um, and um, I'm I'm kind of glad it's uh after the last couple of months glad it's beginning oh yeah uh, you're you're telling us man yeah we are elated that it is almost here just to save us but i'm glad you brought up trey holloman because i was going to say like one thing i'll overreact to like if i see trey holloman just splash home a three like nothing but net like oh, i i'll be talking crazy on here graham oh you there's nothing you can say to me to dampen my spirits if like even trey is just ripping nets from beyond three even against hillsdale i don't care that'd be great well, to see I do think, and you see him in practice play along a lot alongside Jeremy Fierce. Those guys yeah. are kind of a, a, a you know him off the ball and those you know, and and I think he's his willingness to do that helps him. I I I do think one thing to watch is the different lineup combinations they go with. Doesn't mean that's something they're going to use in games if you know when they play starting yeah. in, a, in, a, in a little more than a week. Um, but it does mean there's something. It's something they're worth exploring if they're putting them on the the court together and so i think that is also interesting 
Right on. And Graham, this has been a fantastic time as always. Thanks a lot for your guidance, your mentorship, and also just another great conversation. Anything you want to plug here before we let you go and enjoy the rest of your week in sunny East Lansing? Just to listen to your show, you know, and better oh, off, wow. better wow. off, Thanks. better off weekdays <laughs> that I'm not on too. It's a better show of days I'm not on. The fact that you lower your standards to allow me to speak to your audience is <laughs> don't, great don't do not do this. Don't do this. I, I can do this all day. I, no, you are an esteemed guest. One of the best that we have on here. So no, I really do appreciate your time and everything that you bring to the show, man. I uh, truly, truly do, do appreciate it. Even in the not so sunny days in East Lansing, which there are just a little bit of, but, uh, Again, hey, the NCAA is saving us here, bringing us some smiles. But until next time, Graham, this was great. I uh, can't wait to read the three takes that you have after the Hillsdale game. And, gang, uh, you know that we'll be, <laughs> we will be back tomorrow breaking down that little exhibition against that school down the road in Hillsdale. And, of course, talking about this weekend's game with the fine folks at Locked on Gophers. But until then, love you all. Go Green.